Just to get this out of the way, the purpose of this specific vlog that you're watching right now, this episode, is to document my predictions for Blade Runner 2049 before I see the film. This is Mookie. You'll probably be seeing a lot of him. My friend Hurston O'Malley is kind of behind the scenes guy, so he's taking care of the lighting for me, uh, the camera angles, that kind of stuff, doing running the audio for me. Um, Hurston, do you want to... Do you have anything you want to say to the people? It's the first episode. Do you want to say hi? All right, everybody. Look at me while... Okay, enough of the spectacle. I'm Hurston. Nice to meet you. Is there anything you want to say about yourself? I'm just me. I'm kind of camera shy. I mean, I know you probably just want to stay behind the camera and that kind of stuff, but maybe in the future we'll do like a Hurston segment or something. I don't know. So... What's with all the sounds of... Ho what? What's with all the horses outside? I don't know if you guys can hear that, but that's outside of the house. I'm just in my bedroom right now, so that's like out in the yard. Am I gonna have to be here for every one of these shoots? I'll know. Do you really need me to be here for all this stuff? I'll know. I'll know. Goodbye, everybody. So we are going to talk about the first Blade Runner film, which came out in the 80s, about 30 years ago. Um, so this sequel, 2049, is like a long time in the making, so to speak. Um, the first film is like it's a huge, like it's considered like a cult classic masterpiece among people. It's a sci fi and noir blended film. Heavy on the sci fi, it's kind of known for like its score. Uh, Evangelist did the score for it, so it's like a heavy synth score from the 80s. The uh, visuals of it were like next level. Like, I mean, still to this day, I think it just it looks amazing. They set like a really like great tone for the project. I don't, Have you ever worked with a director who seems so determined to establish an atmosphere like that all the time? Oh, um, most directors do, yes. But I mean, uh, really, is is, is uh, one of his strong suits, of course, is his visual sense and his and his uh, eye. And um, I expected that he would spend a lot of energy on that. This isn't to be. Um, I'm talking about Blade Runner. This is not to be con confused with um, Blade Runner that film that's not what I'm talking about right now it's not gonna be confused with parade honor the one about the judge in the parade and not to be con confused with Abe gutter the one about President Abraham Lincoln who cleans gutters this is not to be confused with those films I'm talking about Blade Runner from the 80s directed by Ridley Scott what's really interesting about the film is that in the year 2000 14, 20, 21, yeah, or something. Yeah, it's 2020. I'm going to be alive. <laughs> I'm going to be alive in the year 2020. Blade Runner is definitely one of my favorite films. It's one of those ones I go back to and watch a lot. I don't know if I'd... It's, it'd probably make my top 20 all-time film list. Um, there's just something about it. Like, it's so rich in its atmosphere. The end scene with Rudger Hauer is just... It's amazing. It kind of reminds me of Apocalypse Now. A lot of the stuff with uh, Marlon Brando's work and the end of that film as well, which is another film that I love. Um, just any film that has, like, it's really thick with atmosphere, heavy and feels, is, like, something that's just automatically going to suck me in. I'd say David Lynch is probably, like, my all-time favorite director, though his films aren't my favorite films. I think a lot of that has to do with his sound design and just how immersed he can get the audience like, he's, like, a great puppeteer of emotions. Like, he can change the tone in a scene at the drop of a hat.
it's like there's nobody that does film and, and television like him. And the new t the new Twin Peaks is just. I'm taking my time with it. I think I'm like halfway through the third season right now. And it's like as much as I want to finish it, I still want there to be something for me to savor and still be unknown and to look forward to. So I am kind of slowly going through Twin Peaks. Oh, it's so good. There's this uh, episode. I don't know what number it is. Maybe eight where it, it gets black and white and it like goes to like a whole nother timeline it's it's just so amazing. The ending of it is just so great. Blade Runner again, like Blade Runner, it's one of those films. Like when you hear there's a sequel coming up or like a reimagining of an older film, a lot of times it's hard to get excited about that kind of stuff anymore, just because what they put out has been such trash. You get to the point where you're like, why even bother going back to this material? Because I read the screenplay, I had doubt about this idea of making a sequel to Blade Runner. But when I read the screenplay, I said, okay, there's, there's the, all the ingredients to make a strong movie here. When I first heard they were going to do like a sequel to Blade Runner, I had the same hesitations probably everybody else felt. I've been watching some videos on YouTube where they talk about ways to improve your vlog. You can even take the sheet off of your bed and put it up in the background, and that makes a great backdrop. I'm gonna go do that right now, I'll be right back. There we go, does that look better? Is it less distracting now that you have the uh, background blocked out? Next, I want to talk about uh, Blade Runner 2049. Um, the reason I did get really excited about this sequel is because Ridley Scott's on board, the original director, as a producer for this one. They got the original screenwriter of Blade Runner to write the new one. And the director they picked was the main thing that got me really excited. So I went to the movie theater and I got the times wrong. I read like the wrong day. So when I got to the theater, the movie I was going to see wasn't starting for like another hour or something. So I just jumped into a different movie that was starting around that time. Um, I looked at the poster and I saw that Sicario was playing. It had Emily Blunt, Benicio Del Toro, and Josh Brolin. And I went to the film, like went into that film just based off of that. Seeing that film without watching the trailer or knowing anything about it, that was probably the best experience I had watching a film that year, watching Sicario. After watching that, I researched who the director was, realized I'd seen a couple of his films before. So when I found out he was doing... The sequel to Blade Runner, I knew it was in a complete, like, a director I respect. It's like somebody that's completely capable of doing the job. And somebody, not only that, it's like somebody I would be excited to see tackle that subject matter. So when you look at the cast they got, they got Harry Sun Ford is in it. Brian Gosling is in it. Jared Lego is in it. And somebody you probably don't know, Mackenzie Davis, is one of my current favorite actresses she's in a show called halt and catch fire on amc which is phenomenal like lee pace is in it scoot mcnary it's fucking horses kenzie davis was in an episode of black mirror that got emmy nominated but she's in Blade Runner as well. And I don't know if she's playing like a Daryl Hannah type role. Like that's what popped in my head for when I first heard she was cast in it. But I don't know anything about her character or what's going on. I've been avoiding all the reviews of this movie. Um, after watching like one or two trailers for the film. That being said, the director of photography on this film is Roger Deakins. He's been Oscar nominated 13 times for director of photography. He's won zero times. If you're not familiar with who Roger Deakins is, he has shot 11 Coen Brothers movies. So odds are, if you like the Coen Brothers, they've used Roger Deakins as their DP pretty much their entire career. A thing is, like, Jared Leto, I know he's one of those current actors who has drawn, like, a very clear line. That he's, like, a very... Gosh, I don't, I don't want to, I want to word this correctly because I don't want to make it sound like other actors aren't. What about uh, uh about uh, Jared Jared Leto? He's a notoriously committed actor. What was it like doing the scene with him? 
you can't talk about what he's doing. Notoriously committed. You mean he cares about what he's doing? Sure. Yeah, I mean, every, yeah, everybody should. There's a bit should. of that going around. You know, uh, he's not the only one. So it's like, you might hate Jared Leto, but I feel like you have to respect him. 